The Lord be with you. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to Matthew. Jesus said to his disciples, Do not think that I have come to abolish the law or the prophets. I have come not to abolish, but to fulfill. Amen, I say to you, until heaven and earth pass away, not the smallest letter or the smallest part of a letter will pass from the law until all things have taken place. Therefore, whoever breaks one of the least of these commandments and teaches others to do so will be called least in the kingdom of heaven. But whoever obeys and teaches these commandments will be called greatest in the kingdom of heaven. I tell you, unless your righteousness surpasses that of the scribes and Pharisees, you will not enter the kingdom of heaven. You have heard that it was said to your ancestors, you shall not kill, and whoever kills will be liable to judgment. But I say to you, whoever is angry with his brother will be liable to judgment. And whoever says to his brother, Raka, will be answerable to the Sanhedrin. And whoever says, you fool, will be liable to fiery Gehenna. Therefore, if you bring your gift to the altar, and there recall that your brother has anything against you, leave your gift there at the altar. Go first and be reconciled with your brother, and then come and offer your gift. Settle with your opponent quickly while on the way to court. Otherwise, your opponent will hand you over to the judge and the judge will hand you over to the guard and you will be thrown into prison. Amen, I say to you, you will not be released until you have paid the last penny. You have heard that it was said you shall not commit adultery. But I say to you, everyone who looks at a woman with lust has already committed adultery with her in his heart. If your right eye causes you to sin, tear it out and throw it away. It is better for you to lose one of your members than to have your whole body thrown into Gehenna. Gehenna. And if your right hand causes you to sin, cut it off and throw it away. It is better for you to lose one of your members than to have your whole body go into Gehenna. It was also said, whoever divorces his wife must give her a bill of divorce. But I say to you, whoever divorces his wife, unless the marriage is unlawful, causes her to commit adultery. And whoever marries a divorced woman commits adultery. Again, you have heard that it was said to your ancestors, do not take a false oath, but make good to the Lord all that you vow. But I say to you, do not swear at all, not by heaven, for it is God's throne, nor by the earth, for it is his footstool, nor by Jerusalem, for it is the city of the great king. Do not swear by your head, for you cannot make a single hair white or black. Let your yes mean yes, and your no mean no. Anything more is from the evil one. The Gospel of the Lord. My brothers and sisters, this is a long text taken from chapter 5 of the Gospel according to Matthew. And this is part of the Sermon of the Mountain uh, that we are listening to during these Sundays. You probably remember last Sunday we had a short text and the Sunday before that, we have the Beatitudes and all that is part of this great sermon of Jesus Christ, 
which occupies chapters 5, 6, and 7 from the Gospel according to Matthew. Believe me, this is a central text for us Christians. And the reason probably can be condensed, can be pinned down to this very word that is almost at the beginning. I have come not to abolish the law, the law of Moses. I have not come, I have come not to abolish, but to fulfill. Fulfill. That's the key word, I think, in this long text from the Gospel according to Matthew. Fulfill. You know, the Jewish people, and in, true, in truth, all humanity, had received from God the commandments, chiefly the Ten Commandments. And that's a strong, a powerful light. You can see uh, this, the, 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 the commandments and the law of Moses like a real light to show the way, mainly because the commandments from God tells, tell us what is good and what is bad, what is good and what is evil. That's very clear in the law according to Moses. And probably we could wonder what's the difference between the law of Moses and the gospel of Jesus Christ. And this is exactly the point of today's gospel. The relationship between the law of Moses and the gospel of Jesus Christ. And before we, we attempt to give an answer, I ask from you that we discard some false responses, some false answers to that very important question. Again, the relationship between the law of Moses and the gospel of Jesus Christ. You could imagine, probably, that that relationship is that uh, now we who live under the gospel of Jesus Christ, we have it easier. Because, you know, the law of Moses was very strict, was difficult to fulfill, and we can find even in the letter of St. Paul to the Romans, chapter 2, that really nobody was able to really be up to the task of obeying fully the law of Moses. So some people believe that what we have now is something that is easier, something that is more uh, that is that that comes nearer our human condition so that it is not that difficult it is not that harsh to to, to be done uh, in that sense some people think that all the message of mercy that is so characteristic so so uh, close to the teaching of Jesus Christ the gospel of mercy is something that is more uh, understanding and is uh, easier for us to understand also and also and uh, is all it's something that we can really do in, in short some people imagine that the gospel is kind of some permission to sin or that sin is not that serious because now we are under God, under the mercy of God, so that the power of God is mainly to have compassion for us, so that we shouldn't worry about our condition of sinners, because uh, this is the gospel of mercy. But clearly, today's gospel is here to debunk that idea. That, that's not true. If we go to the text, if we go to the gospel, we see that, the, that Jesus' proposal is harsher, it's more difficult. Look at this, just one example. You have heard, this is an allusion 
to the law of Moses. You have heard that it was said to your ancestors, you shall not kill. But I say to you, whoever is angry with his brother will be liable to judgment. May I ask, what law, which law is more difficult to obey? What was said in the law of Moses, do not kill, or what Jesus is teaching us in today's gospel, do not even be angry, really angry of course, really, really angry, that kind of anger that moves you to try to destroy, to think of destroying your brother. Do not be angry. So what is more difficult? To refrain yourself from killing or to refrain yourself from being angry? You see that what Jesus is asking from us is not easier. So please debunk that idea throw away that idea that the gospel is easier than the law of Moses or that we have now uh, an easier opportunity to live our Christian life in comparison with the effort that Jewish people the Jewish people had trying to obey the law of Moses that's not true so that false interpretation we should debunk, we should throw away. We could also think of the gospel of Jesus Christ as a sort of continuation, like a second part of the law of Moses. But that's not the case. Jesus is not simply adding more commandments. The Jews had more than 600 commandments. Jesus is not adding to that list something. It is not about adding. It is about going deeper. Going to the inner part of our hearts. It is moving us. It is reaching out to that part of our being, which is called usually in the Bible, our heart. So that it is our heart that is faithful to the Lord. It is not only doing good deeds. It's not only saying good things. It is about where and how your heart is before God. So the Lord Jesus Christ is not abolishing, is not discarding the law of Moses, nor is he proposing something easier or more understanding of our human condition. Actually, he is proposing, he is commanding us something that is more difficult in itself. It is more difficult, but even if it is more difficult, it is better for us in the sense that if we begin with the transformation of our innermost part of our being, if we begin with the transformation, with the conversion of our hearts, everything that the law was trying to achieve, was trying to reach out, we, by the grace of God the Father, and by the grace of Jesus Christ, and by the power and the anointment of the Holy Spirit, we will be able to do. We are the ones that are called to really reach the goal because the transformation is not only doing things, doing deeds, saying things. It is about changing your heart by the power of the word of Christ. 
by the power of his prayer, by the power of his grace, which is, in simple terms, the gift of the Holy Spirit to each one of us. So, my friends, that is the relationship between the law, between the law of Moses and the gospel of Jesus Christ. The final end, the final goal is the same. Full communion with God. Holiness. It is the same goal. But the law of Moses couldn't reach, couldn't achieve that goal because was unable to change, to transform our hearts. And that's Jesus Christ's speciality. That's what he does in our lives. He takes our lives and transforms them, transform them with the power of his word, with the power of his prayer, with the power of his spirit, so that we, transformed in our inner self, are able to reach what was impossible for the law of Moses. That's the beautiful relationship between the law of Moses and the gospel of Jesus Christ. And may the Lord bless you. Thank you for being here.